I'm going to go ahead and bring in Masuda Sultan. She's the founder of the human rights group uh, Women for Afghan Women. She's also helped found the coalition All in Peace, which is seeking to find a peaceful end to the war in Afghanistan. And Masuda, thank you for joining us. I understand uh, that Kandahar uh, was the town in which you were born. It's also the site of the largest attack on a polling station on Saturday. Uh, as an Afghan woman, how, how important is this vote for you personally? and the attack on your birthplace? Well, it's, it's very unfortunate um, that that happened. In fact, there were attacks across a few cities in Afghanistan. And as mentioned, five people were killed, probably more than 30 injured. In Kandahar in particular, it is the uh, former stronghold of the Taliban. It is also the city of my birth. And um, as it is, it's a very conservative place. So women turning up to vote uh, was a very big deal. In fact, they did have a uh, few women uh, uh, as workers, poll uh, station workers. So that was one of the challenges, in addition to security challenges. So yes, uh, it was very unfortunate. But the Taliban had warned the Afghan people from day one that they should not vote. It did not stop people, but it stopped a lot of, of, of the voters. And uh, that's why you had low turnout. Other than dissuading people from voting, what is the Taliban's aim in these attacks, do you think? Well, I think it, you, the recent events uh, uh, show a few things. Number one, the Taliban have always uh, called the uh, government, uh, the current government in Afghanistan, as a puppet of the United States. And they have insisted that in the negotiation process that they engage directly with the U.S. government and that the following, uh, after an agreement, that they would engage with the Afghan government. So they've always been uh, sort of against the whole premise of this government. Um, number two, uh, when it comes to this particular uh, election, I think that uh, the fact that the peace agreement was was almost signed by the United States and the Taliban made this a particularly unpopular election, uh, both uh, for the population and also for the Taliban, who saw it as a direct threat to the peace deal. Those talks uh, with the U.S. collapsed, they were a precursor to talks uh, with the Afghan government or the next uh, Afghan government, that might lead us down a road where we could see the Taliban involved uh, back uh, in the political conversation. Are you concerned what that might mean for women if it seems perhaps women might be excluded as a cost for that? Well, I think as long as the international community keeps pressing for women's participation, and that's an effort that we're all very much involved in, through uh, both the women's group uh, that I helped found and also the peace group, that we want to see at least 30 percent participation in the negotiations by women. Um, as long as we have the right representation there, I think that we have the, the, the potential to secure the rights that we uh, deserve. Um, the concern is if the participation is not there, that women's rights will be bargained away in the peace process. We understand that some women didn't vote because uh, voters uh, needed to be photographed. Can you tell us a little bit about how women voters uh, have changed in the last uh, post-Taliban rule, if you will? Well, Afghanistan, as you know, is a deeply conservative society. Women were wearing burqas, required to wear burqas, which is a full covering of the face and the body um, during the Taliban times. Uh, while uh, in some conservative areas, that's just the norm, particularly in the South, um, and it is completely uh, uh, unacceptable in, in that culture to have a woman photographed. And so um, uh, this, this has been some, an ongoing issue in, in previous elections as well, and, um, uh, but it's something we can't get around. At the end of the day, women's faces do need to be photographed. And there's been some debates about the Islamic uh, uh, requirements of women, meaning many interpretations allow for women's faces to be shown. Uh, I think in a deeply conservative society, it's going to take a little bit of time for that to become the norm. But in Kabul, you see many women uh, without the, the, their face covered and just with their, their hair and their body covered. So society is changing. It's happening slowly. There's still people that uh, have a problem with that. Masuda Sultan, thank you for your insight on this historic day. Thank you for having me on.